Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. This is episode 30 of Talk Social News, and today we're actually going to be talking about something very kind of near and dear to my heart, how to build a social media following. But I'm going to try to not make it sound so awful. Make it sound like it's such a thing of like, uh, we got to actually talk about this. Because I want to take you through some of the steps and some of the things that that I think about when I when I talk with either clients or if I'm even just working for myself. These are just some of the guidelines and some of the things that I, I talk about. So, but I really hope to bring you into the conversation today. And this is not just a bully pulpit. Uh, of sorts so but guys um, if you would thank you guys for being here um, I'm trying to check on uh, who's actually who's actually in the show or who's watching the show if you guys haven't already please do me a favor just do me a quick favor we just share the show out because you know what that's that's what we're doing and I'm, I'm sorry I'm looking over I see uh, I see Terry on this morning um, just get, bear with me here there we go um, I see Lindsay and who else is there? Keeps changing. Cindy. Oh, hey, Cindy. Great to see you. Um, all right. So if you guys would, just quick share it out um, as we kind of get this show rolling. And in the meantime, though, um, how about this? You know, I'll just give you a, like a minute or two or something like that to, to get this going. But guys, let's get this thing going this morning. <music> All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jonathan Tripp. This is episode number 30 of this year's podcast. A lot of people are saying, John, you've done a lot more than 30 episodes. I know I started, started, I renumbered them for 2017 because we were doing something different this year than we did last year because we're trying to keep up with what's happening in the world and such like that. But um, yeah, this is episode 30, uh, Talk Social News, uh, talking about, well, I mean, this is just the name of the show. It's just kind of what it's become. Some people remember it as Jonathan Tripp Live. I mean, that is that is true. That's how you can kind of, you know, that's how you get over here and things like this. But I think the really more important thing is, um, guys, we are we really are community-centered. We're, we're, we're participatory kind of a show. So whether you're listening to this as a podcast or watching it as a YouTube video or whatever, you can actually add comments and people respond, including myself. Now, it's hard to do it. I'm going to be honest. It's hard to write, type, and talk, and do the, you know, do the production side of it all at the same time. That is, that's a little hard. So, but I do try to, I keep my eye on the comments. I try down there. Thank you so much for all the hearts. I see you. I appreciate them because hearts, I think, are hard to come by sometimes. But guys, um, so... If you haven't already, this is kind of like that first general call. Um, make sure you're a part of Live Talk Nation. Uh, we are doing some really kind of cool things um, in the group. We've got some really kind of cool things we're starting to roll out over the next couple of months. There's, uh, you know, there there is this show where this is kind of like the Friday recap and just kind of send you into the weekend, hopefully in a good mood. Um, you know, a little bit more well informed. Hopefully, you've had a good time. Um, so here we also have the let's live stream chat that happens on Wednesday. We talk about live streaming on Twitter and we also publicize it and, and, and produce it here in the Live Talk Nation group. Um, we also have a couple of other shows that, that from time to time uh, pop up and they come out. And, you know, so that's kind of what they do. Um, they, they, hopefully it's a little more tech oriented. Maybe it's a little bit more, uh, uh in, uh, show informative teaches you a little bit more, but that's really kind of what the, what the group is becoming. It's it, this is how, this is where you learn how to do something, um, and be able to connect with lots of different people. So, um, having said that guys, if you haven't already join the group, let, uh, live talk nation, it's a great place. We actually, we have a lot of fun. We've been going on for, for a while now. Um, guys, thank you everybody that is joining us on Facebook. I see you guys, Alex and Terry. Thank you, Lindsay, for coming back. I saw that. Do me a favor. If you're in the Facebook group, tag somebody that you know that should be here to watch this show. Because what are we doing? 
I mean, we're doing a show to be seen. We're doing a show uh, to help inform. And actually, we're going to do a show, and you guys will actually find out what we're going to be doing about the show. So, you know, we, without too much further ado, without too much further ado, I actually just want to kind of get a little bit more into the content today. And I really do want to actually just talk straight out, be straight out, and just name it, call it what it is, how to build a social media following. Now, I am not this crazy, far-reaching, you know, flip the industry on its head kind of guy with this kind of stuff. And here's the reason why. I think the vast majority of people, I think they're doing it pretty right. I, I, or they're doing elements that are right. So this is not, you know, nobody knows what they're talking about. I'm the only one here. You have to pay attention to this one because, and, I, and, and I'm saying that in all honesty, because I think we need to have that. All right. I, I'm, I am personally tired of a lot of the, here are the only five steps that you need to have a six-figure launch. Right. I've heard that. I've read it. I, I've, and maybe it's great. Maybe it's kind of great PR, like headline, catchy headline, because I mean, who wouldn't? I'm five easy steps. Um, that'd be awesome, but that's just not really how it works, is it? No, it's not. So having said that, you know, um, let's, let's kind of get into it. And today I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little underpowered. Here's the mug shot for the day. There it is. How about that? Nice camera close up. By the way, this mug's courtesy of Melissa Reyes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's talk about some of these principles. Okay. And I'm going to say right off the bat, these are not principles that everybody, every single person, business, lifestyle, coach, um, mentor, guru, uh, philanthropist. This is not, these are not steps that are going to work in every single case because here's the thing. Getting a social following, having a social following is different than running a business. It's different than being a lifestyle coach. Okay, it's different, but these are some really pretty hard and fast principles that are actually working now, not in 2015. Okay, so let's let's actually get let's get started with this because it is important that we that we start this the right way. All right, and I, I'm gonna I actually have I actually have notes for today's show. At least these are notes, and and I the reason why I did that is because I want. Uh, I want to try to stay on track today. But like we said, how to build a social media following, okay? There is a lot to say for this. You know, how how do you do this? And, and it, like I was saying, this is not a one size fits all. It, we get started and and, and I, think, I think the first thing that we really have to pay attention to, um, it, it's, it, it's very simple. It, it's literally, we just need to ask the question, what are you saying? Because without that, you are going to be posting anything, and I do mean anything and everything, just to get attention. And that is completely the wrong way to do it. Now, you're able to post things that get attention, but it's not simply for attention's sake, because otherwise, all it is is headline after headline, catchy after catchy uh, title, but there's no substance. There's no real reason to follow. And I'm, I want to definitely tell you that stay away from that kind of mindset. Stay away from that sort of practice. In the long run, you will thank me, okay? So, so when we say, what are you saying? We're, we're actually talking about things like, well, what do we post? What, what are the things that we post online? Uh, because we're talking about, and again, the, the, the purpose of this is, is to draw out and to have a, a good social media following around your around your business personality your niche your topic okay and we're we're talking about just what to do this is not a how to business course but it's what to post on social media because you're trying to gather a good social media following and we'll get to the reasons why you might want to do that okay but what do you post and the real question is like how do you start what do you say where do you post it Right. We ask all of these questions because we, we really are desperately trying to connect and find that group of people that are going to support us that will, in essence, follow us. And that's trickier 
than it seems. So my first, my first thing that I, I want you to start going down this road with me today, all right? And we're, what we're basically going to be doing, we're, we're, it, this, I want you to start out right now thinking about how to gather uh, and build a social media following. Let's go along the idea of, of a scrapbook. And I know some of you guys absolutely love that idea. It's a collection or a collage. I mean, we, we've done this. Uh, um, or, or Pinterest board. I mean, really, it, it could be a, tw uh, a Twitter mentions. It could be your um, an, a Facebook album. You guys are, I think, I'm, I think I've made enough of these analogies that you guys are kind of getting it, that what I'm saying, this is, I mean, we went, we went old school scrapbook, right? All the way up to, you know, some of the new stuff. You, you storify, you know, I mean, there's, there's lots of different ways to collect these ideas, but I want you to do this, and I want you to think of this in terms of like a mental scrapbook okay that's what you're trying to create for your audience you're trying to give them something to to follow and there's a number of different ways to do this okay and that that that's really going to be the challenge because what you're doing you're building a narrative a collection an online diary of sorts it's important that when you start to when you start to build this and where this is the this is the bigger picture Okay, and how, so how are you going to do this, right? You're going to do this through, through drawings and notes and plans and sketches. And it gets to be a little scary, but let me tell you, what are, the, so, okay, so John, th those, are, those are awesome ideas to have. But you're going to be using audio, photography, pictures, videos, interviews. You're going to inspire people. But more importantly, you're going to be telling a story. And I know, I think that that's going to be one of the words in 2017 that we either love it or we hate it because I think it gets overused, but I'm not talking about the Instagram stories or the Snapchat stories. I'm talking about your stories. Every single one of you guys have a story in the day. All right. And this is not a one size fits all approach. This is not a guide to lifestyle, uh, 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 storytelling, collaborative effort or any of that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is telling a story along the way, because in the process, see, a lot of people ask, they, they say, okay, well, how do I build a story? Because my life is wicked boring. And I've actually heard that this week. And you know what? It may be true. Your, may, your life may be absolutely boring to you and maybe to some other people. But I'm going to guarantee you out there, this in telling your story, in documenting what you do, you're going to learn about yourself. And in the process, your audience is going to learn about you, which I think is actually the bigger problem that you have. I think the bigger problem that, that you're afraid of is the fact that you really don't want your audience to know you. You want your audience to know some of you, some parts of you. So when I say learn about yourself, the process is the way that you're going to do this. So, but, but John, that's great when it comes to a personal brand. And I see a good handful of you guys here today that are actually, that have a personal brand. I think I really do. I'm, I'm watching you over here on Facebook and I see you guys. And I think of, um, I think of Mia Voss. Okay. I, I see you're watching. You have a personal brand that, that is, that is what you, you do. It's what you express. It's how you, it's how you go out. It's your personal brand, but that might be very different than somebody that works for a corporate business or a small to mid-sized business where they are not necessarily the face of the business. So John, how does what you're saying by doing stories, how does that apply to somebody that does not have a personal brand? And the answer is this document your work. When you start to do that, you start to think in those terms, these are the projects I'm working on. These are the, these are the, these are the, the steps that I'm doing today. And I don't mean giving out proprietary secret behind the scenes, giving out client names and, you know, bank account pin numbers. And this is how we do. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, look, Hey, this is, this is, this is the mindset that you have, or these are some of the bigger steps that you're going through because, uh, uh when you set up a project, Okay, because when it comes to telling your story, only you're going to tell your story your way. 
And at first, I'm going to be honest. Okay, let's see here. It's going to suck. You're going to suck at it. It's going to be awful. It is going to be boring. Maybe not the first one. The first one usually is pretty good because you put a lot of effort in. But number two through five, maybe through 19, they're going to suck. It's going to be boring. And you're going to figure out you're going to have a couple of highlights. It's going to be fun occasionally. But after a while, you're going to be like, I'm out. Like, this is so hard. Nobody's watching. You know, I don't, I, nobody's increasing the, 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 uh, uh, um, you know, the engagement level. Let's, let's use a buzzword there. The engagement level's gone. But I'm going to tell you this. If you're in a business, have a doc, think of it in, in a terms of document your work. It's super important. Here, I even made a slide of it, right? Here, document your work. That's how important it is. I got so into that point, I didn't even put the slide up, right? Or the picture up, whatever it is. So, um, but here's the thing. So, so when, when we talk about like document your work and here's the reason why, and I, I really hope, I hope you guys understand this part. Terry, I love it. Thank you so much. It really is encouraging. I'm so glad you guys are, are doing this. And by the way, would you, just quick, would you guys share this out just really quick or tag somebody you know that should be watching this one today, okay? So when we talk about document your work, and here's the reason why I think you should be documenting your work. Experts forget the struggle. Gurus, they forget the struggle. The masters, the experts, the gurus, they forget the struggle. They forget what it's like when you start out doing nothing. And they'll say, oh, I remember doing that. But there, that was then, this is now. And I mean, right now, when you're out trying to document your work in a very busy and a very noisy environment on social media speaking, we need to ask that question. What do we need to do from the ground up? Not at steps five, six, seven, and eight. Not when you already have 20, 40, 80,000 followers. We're talking about what, what if you're just getting started? It's not just enough to make more noise, to make more content. That's not what we're saying. But I want you to ask these questions because if the, if the experts, if they've forgotten the struggle, we need to get down and really ask some of the questions and the content we produce. And I want, to ask, I want you to ask these three questions and I wasn't smart enough and I don't think I asked, I don't think I put, uh, I, I don't think I put a slide up for this, right? But I, I do want to I do want you to ask these three questions, okay? And that's, would they like this? Would they actually enjoy watching this content, seeing this content? Would they like it? The next question, because that gets a lot of people in, the next question, this is where you start to thin the herd, so to speak. And I can't believe I just called an audience a herd, but I just did. Would they pay for this? Now this starts to get into a, a question of, uh, of, a, of, a, of trading the, the, the value of the knowledge, the experience of it for something more tangible. And in this case, would they pay for it? Okay. And, and the next question, and this is really only after you've asked question number two, if you, if you mix this order up, you're going to go broke. The last question that I want you to ask would they participate in this? Because if, they, if they're willing to pay for it and they're willing to participate in it, you've got something that is really gonna start solving problems and it's really gonna start connecting and you're gonna bring about a greater, a deeper, a better connection with an audience and people are gonna start going, ah, you know what, that's somebody to follow. I like what they say. I like how they're thinking. I like what they're doing. I'm gonna follow them and no matter what platform they're on, I'm gonna follow them. Because when we talk about the documenting our work, the aspect that I want you to focus on is don't, don't, don't think about, no, let me say it the other way. I want you to focus on the benefits, not the features. I want you to think about the journey, not the destination. Share your journey with us. If you're struggling as a new entrepreneur, granted, I don't want to see every single failure, but I do want to see maybe what you're failing at because maybe I can relate to it. How many of you guys have known, um, have any of you guys been following my journey and know that, look, I, you know, I've done a number of different shows. I've done an, uh, uh, several different like online, uh, like, uh, um, uh, conferences and things like this. And, and you know what, they don't all, they're not all huge successes and that's okay because I've learned from each one and I try to make myself better from it. And I've done my best uh, and I think in a good way to share it out. 
so that you guys can learn from it. So when I think it's, it's share the journey, not just the destination. Look, we love success stories, but, but if you want a following, you want to get the following, bring them along the, the struggle of it. I mean, I got so much, I got so much here. I know I want to say with this, um, another point in this, um, and this is, this is, and remember early on what I was talking about was, um, was there, there, this is not five steps to get your social media following. Okay. Because there are different approaches for everybody. But what I do want to hint at, and no, Terry, I'm not going to do a part two. I'm going to actually, I'm going to put it all in today. Okay. I'm going to put this all in today. Awesome. I love it. I, I'm catching up on some of these. Joseph Burke, awesome. You love the documented aspect of work, yep, life and progress. And you do that. You share, you create for us. Fear of failure. Donna, happy birthday, Donna. Where do you, where do you document it? We'll actually talk about that. Me and Voss, preach it. Jonathan, document your work. That's awesome. I love it. All right. So one of the things that, that are, is going to separate us out, um, and, and, and this is more of a personality based for you guys as well. Okay. And it's going to come down to this. I, I want you to think in, in, in not absolute terms, but, but we're going to kind of group things into two groups to help you maybe get started. And then as you do it, as you document it, the, the journey will become more apparent to you. It will make more sense because as you're doing it, you're going to find your voice and what works, what your audience likes, what they really don't like, and what you actually feel that you're really good at. Right. Because if I if I was to go out and to start drawing uh, uh, characters and trying to do screen, uh, um, you know, so screen share and show how I'm learning to draw, you guys would absolutely you, you would make it through about two and a half minutes um, because it would be that awful um, versus maybe some other artists where they're they're doing it a little bit differently and they're and they're starting to create things. So this is what I want to I want to show and you're going to figure this out. But I want you to think in terms of are you to create versus collaborate? And again, hear me out, okay? This is not you do one or the other, but I want you to start somewhere. I want you to think like, are, do you create, are you laser focused on that thing and you make that thing? It could be artwork. It could be a mug like Melissa Reyes, okay? Um, it could be a lot of these other things. Or do you feel more comfortable? Do you feel that your story, your journey is actually more of a shoulder to shoulder with people bringing on? And I'm gonna tell you the truth. I am actually way more comfortable in the collaboration format than I am just the single solo uh, create um, uh, aspect. Now, they both actually accomplish a lot of the same things. I like collaborating more than I do just being by myself, just making a piece of content and putting it out there and then promoting the heck out of it. That, that is a way, but where do you start? Do you start solo or do you start with collaboration in mind? And that's going to be a key to making or uh, to making your journey, to starting your journey. Okay. And it's not exclusive. It's not forever. But, um, so once you, once you understand that part, once you understand that part, where are you going to start? Now I want you to think now we're actually getting into the social media part. And this is the most important part of this. And, and I mean, I cannot say it enough. That's why I'm leaving this slide up for so long. Speak on the platform. If you're on YouTube, be on YouTube and speak in a way that people on YouTube understand. If you're on Instagram, be on Instagram and do Instagrammy things. If you love Twitter, be Twitter, LinkedIn. It's not that you can't be you on, you have to be a different you on different platforms, but speak to the language and methodology on that platform in a way that under, be, that is understood. Do not, do not blog on Twitter. It ain't going to work, right? Be witty, be quick, be, be in the know, be up to date, be fast and, and responsive and personable on Twitter. If you have a blog post, then you, now you have the room to be creative and, and to write and to take time. But, but again, speak to the platform, okay? Create for the platform. Same voice, different media. And this is, a, this is a very difficult concept for, I think, a vast, vast, vast majority of people to get. They don't understand this really basic concept. When you're on a platform, create content specifically for that, for that platform. Now that doesn't mean that, uh, for instance, I could take this piece that I, that this live stream today, I'm live streaming it out, 
I'm gonna, I could take the audio out and I could make it into a podcast. That's a different pl uh, platform, right? I could take maybe some of the slides and I can make a slide share for LinkedIn. You know, that's another thing or a Google slide share or something like that, right? I can make a blog post out of it. I could start tweeting some of this stuff out, right? There's lots of different things, but what, I, what I'm saying is, is that you can have the same voice on different media platforms. It's the same voice, but you need to be very specific for the platform and speak in the way that that platform is going to get it. Having 20 minutes of just welcoming people in, hey, it's great to see you. I'm so glad you do put that up on YouTube. No one's going to watch and follow you because you're wasting their time. They want content and right to the point. Another thing I want you to think about, which is unique versus unity when you're speaking on the platform. And this, th there is a big division in terms of how people uh, are thinking and, and how people will advise you or, or you know, con uh, uh, th they will coach you on this, right? Be a consultant. This is, that's the, that's the big word. That's the big money word, okay? Are you gonna create, create unique content for each platform? Or are you going to create one piece of plat uh, one piece of content and put it out on every single platform? Um, there, that is a that's a really that's a really difficult concept for I think people to really understand. Um, but I, I'm going to say this, okay? Getting back to the same voice, uh, different media. So uh, um, pictures, audio, video, different media types, but it's still all me. It's still all you. And as you're documenting your journey, you need to do this. So, but keep it, keep on it. And how are you going to do this? Same voice, the me and it's the same message everywhere. I'm going to suggest this. All right, find that piece of content that you can create and you do really well, because I would rather see in this really noisy world, I would rather see you make less content that's better than more that sucks because we have so much content out there that we have to weed through to get to the really good stuff. It makes curating content a really necessary thing, almost over necessary. It's almost why you have, you have to ask people, you know, you have some people like sort your mail because you get 18 bags of mail and you don't know what's important. You don't have time to sort through 18. So you need to hire somebody. Hey, would you help me sort this? It, this is that's essentially what we're talking about here. So guys, do us all a favor, put out really good stuff and then connect and collaborate with those because I'll be honest, like I want to promote you. I want to share your really good content. I don't want to share your uh, kind of content. That stuff just doesn't, we don't have time for that. Make better content. If you posted in social media three times a week and it was really amazing stuff, I love it. I love it. And I think it'll reduce your stress. But John, okay, so so really the question now, now you're asking, okay, John, I get it. So, so I, sure, I hear what you're saying. So what are the steps? What are the steps to do this? Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a cup of coffee here. No, seriously. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to suggest that you do is create guidelines for your content. And this, this is probably the most boring thing that you're going to do. This is the most important, but this is the, we're talking about the themes, the styles, the colors, the, the typography, you know, that, that kind of stuff. I want you to, I want you to decide like, look, I want a very vintage looking brand. I want a very retro looking brand. I want a very cutting edge looking brand. I want it. I want it to look cool. Like the eighties. That was Joe Burke. That was for you. And by the way, your anchor podcast was yesterday was awesome. But guys, I want you to think in those terms and, and, and I, you can you can elaborate them out more, but I'm giving you some examples. Come up with a theme, a style, a color, get something that you're known for or that you feel comfortable in. OK, um, I, I, I to be honest, let me hear. Let me let me give you some examples of 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 uh, um, uh, of different content creators. OK, uh, first off, Melissa Reyes. Face, uh, just find her on Facebook. Go Melissa Reyes. She does a number of different things, but they're all very. Melissa Reyes right here. Here's the mug. I actually got to put it right back in the light. Okay. That this is a brand. This is something when I, when I see this and, um, th th this is part of her brand. It fits her themes, her styles, her colors. Um, somebody else you want to follow on, on, uh, on, uh, on Instagram, follow, follow this. It's the greater good. And it's the 
G R E Y T R G O O D. So the greater in the, the greater part is G R E Y T E R. Find her on Instagram. She's a calligrapher artist, but she does way more. And her approach to her craft sets her apart from everybody else because it's not just someone you draw on a piece of paper because honestly I've got I've got better things to do in my life but her stories are compelling and the way she does it she has a theme she has a style she has she has a methodology for it and it's very captivating both in the, on the Instagram side as well as on the story side so she's making content for the platform that she's on and the last one and and this one's different and I want to give you guys a different one um, that's not a personal brand that's not necessarily uh, that that's not a business I mean that that is a business but it's not like a personal one person business um, it's coffee gator and that's G A T O R um, and here's the reason why I bring this up is because they bring they're on several platforms and they're doing a really good job in terms of uh, talking about and advertising what it is that they do. So there are three good ones. So Melissa Reyes, The Greater Good, and Coffee Gator. Find them. Look at what they're doing. How are they making media? How are they making content on each of the social platforms? I'm on a roll today. You want me to talk about do you want me to talk about what not to put? What not to put on your business page? I feel like Mia Voss and her uh, Social Media Day Denver. This is what you don't do. There we go. But coffee first. So yeah, let me, if, if you want me to do, yes, <laughs> so yes, I am. Do you guys want me to talk? You want me to talk about real quick about what you shouldn't put on your business page or, or on your, on your business profile? I don't want to say just page because that's very exclusionary on your business profile. Is that something you guys want? Is if not, I'll skip over it. You should, you should come on my show on Saturday. Interesting. Yeah, Donna's like, yes, please. Awesome. Because I, I know there's a delay. Yes, let's talk about it. Okay, it's on. And Zach. Yeah, we'll be in touch, man. We can do that. Okay, so here is the thing. What shouldn't you put on your business page? Let's keep it really, let's, let's be, be really pretty straightforward. Okay, now I, I'm going to put some caveats on this. Um, if you are a lifestyle brand, these do not necessarily, um, these do, these rules or, or these kind of guidelines that, that I'm, I'm thinking of don't necessarily apply to you because your brand is personal, but there are some definite things that, that you should be kind of putting some guideposts up and you should exclude from your, from your business profile, even if you are a lifestyle person. Okay. I, I I'm just going to say it like this. Stop posting about your food. Okay. On your, on your business page, guys, on your business page, your business profile, stop posting about your food. Stop just like taking a picture of like, Hey, this is a yummy burger or these fries changed my life. I, right. I mean, it, it's kind of funny. It, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of catchy, you know, like, but coffee first and, you know, like, and I do a little bit of it, but, but what I, what I'm going with this is guys, this is not, I, I'm, I'm not coming to your business page to see what you've eaten. What I want to come to your business page. I want you to document your, uh, your journey. I want you to show me the work. I want you to give me some value that that's going to make me better as a, as an entrepreneur, um, as a, as a content creator, um, or a, as a better writer or whatever that thing is in your business that you help people do. Let your business page be that. So stop posting about your pets. I like them. They're cute. I like pets. I'm a, I'm an animal person, but not on my business page. Okay. There's a reason for that. Okay. And the other one, I'm just going to say as a general rule and not in absolute terms, keep your family out of it. Put your family. If you really want to post about those things, go make a personal profile, go make your own personal Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. Well, if you have Facebook, you already have your own personal one, but make it, but that's where you put those pictures. Stop putting them on your business page. And there's a reason for that because when I go to your business page, I want to know and I want to see exactly what it is that you do. So it, let your business page be niche driven. Speak to your audience, not share every single minutia of uh, uh, you know detail of your life. In the long run, it doesn't build your brand; it just creates more noise. So when you're creating content on Instagram, keep it for Instagram, and in the same manner. 
I want you to think about your personal page versus your business page in the same way. Put your personal stuff on your personal so that your friends, your family, your neighbors down the street or whatever, your friends from Seattle, they get to see what you had for lunch because, hey, guess what? I used to live there and I remember that restaurant. Now that's a really great, oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Your pets are cool. Your family is fun. That's awesome, but that's personal stuff. Keep your business page niche driven and speak to your audience because that is what's going to get you a social media following. As a matter of fact, I even want to push you this far, and, and I hope this kind of irks some people, but go for the unfollow. I almost want you to be so niche driven that you actually almost exclude some people and you, you see your number might actually go down. That means you're creating content that they don't like, which means that, hey, you're, 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 you're bringing down your audience size to only the people that really like your content. And that, that a lot of people, they don't agree, they don't understand that, but when you're going and trying to connect with people on a really very specific, very specific level, I'd rather have a thousand people that are on a membership site that are paying a hundred dollars a month than to have a hundred thousand uh, with maybe say maybe 10 people that pay that. But I, oh, I've got a bigger social media following. Not the point guys. You want an audience that, that likes what you do, that will pay you for it and that want to participate. So go for the unfollow. But John, what about media that, what about the content I've already put out there and it sucks and it's like I put something out and everybody hates it. Well, keep moving forward, guys. Keep moving forward. If you really want to, go back and delete it. But honestly, don't get stuck trying to be perfect in every aspect of, of your social media following. Just stop. It doesn't work. That's not the way social's built. People don't really, for the most part, they don't go back that far. They're not going to go back two years to make sure that your Instagram uh, uh, themes are, are, are consistent for two years before they do business. You know what? No, they're going to scroll maybe one or two pages to see, okay, good. They, they've, they've put out some content. They're there. Okay. Now build on it. Do something else. Don't get stuck in the past. And if you really want something, uh, listen to, uh, my anchor podcast from uh, my, my second to last uh, anchor podcast. Actually, I think it's episode one. You need to listen to that one. If you really feel stuck in that. Now, this goes hand in hand with better is not more, okay? Too little or too much when you post, because that's one of the big questions. How much do I post? You post too little, no one's gonna see you. Post too much, people aren't gonna engage. You gotta find that sweet spot for your audience. Test it out. You're gonna screw it up and it's gonna suck, but you're gonna get it if you keep at it and you're methodical about it. Find the metrics, find the things that really work for your audience with your message on your platform. It's different because people are different. So let's get back to it. Let's, let's, let, if I was to say, so what are the steps? What are the overall steps? And I already know I use that slide and, and, you know, send the hate mail or whatever you want because I use a slide twice, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to, let's, I'm going to break it down into three things and we'll close out with this. You know, okay. The, know you, know them. That's where I want you to start. Know who you are or know your message and then know your audience so that you communicate with them. There's a lot to be said for that because that's really going to go so well with the next part, which is be you, not them. They don't follow you because they see a mirror of themselves. They're coming to follow you as you document your journey about what you're learning. Be you not them. And as you create the content, you're going to have more followers, more people that are interested, and then it's going to lead to the last thing. And this is actually the hardest part for most of you. And that's participate in conversations because as you create content, what's going to happen is you're going to have people that are going to reach out and say, I really like what you're doing. This is kind of awesome. Where did you start? What do you do? And they're going to they're going to make conversations and notice I didn't use the word engagement, follow your engagement. No, participate in conversations because these are real people. If you want social media, it's going to take a little bit, participate in conversations. And that's going to make, and that is going to, that is going to build you and get you started in building a social media following because without that, you're just posting crap all day long and nobody cares. So guys, this was, the, I, 
this was uh, this this is kind of what I was thinking about. I, I know I put together some things, uh, some of those uh, some of the slides and stuff like this. But guess what? I think it's all right. I think it's right on. I think that this message, I think more people need to hear this and actually listen and, and do it. And I, I'm pretty hard nosed about some of this stuff, but this is just the getting started part of how you give, how you get more a social media following. It's not a one size fits all, but these things do work and it, it will take a little bit of time. You can accelerate it with some paid ads, but, but even then throwing money at, at, a, at your content does not necessarily make it great or more engaging. It just makes it more expensive. So guys, what I would like you to do if you can, and if you want, you can still share this out. That's fine. Put a comment and tell me what you think of today's show. Maybe the format's a little bit different. Tell me if you liked it or if you're like, ah, John, it's all right. You, if you don't even want to put it there, just message me. That's, that's all right. I'm okay with that. I got some, I, I know you guys, I, I know you guys love it. I know you guys come back week after week and I appreciate that. And that's one of the reasons why I do this show. But um, if you guys haven't already, you can, uh, you can uh, go over to, uh, uh, go over to jonathantrip.com and sign up for a newsletter there, or even better yet, why don't you like Vitmug's page? Vitmug is our, is our new, uh, um, Vitmug is our, is our new uh, uh, collaborative effort um, putting out and working in social media, um, live streaming, audio. Um, we're trying to put this to, we are putting this together actually as a, as a real service that you can use, that you can, um, that you can utilize in your business. And, um, I, I, I say that having been and gone through the trenches and I'm still there producing content. And so it's not just something that you hand off and you say, Oh, okay. It's just, it's cookie cutter. No, it's not. And so with that guys, what I will say is that, yeah, go over to fitmug.com. Uh, sign up for the newsletter or like us on Twitter or um, or Facebook. I think it'd be I think it'd be a really great uh, really great way for you to uh, to start seeing how some different people are making content. If you're watching this and you already haven't, make sure you are also a part of Live Talk Nation. It is one of the best places to collaborate. It does not have ten thousand members in it yet, but I guarantee you the people that are in it are some of the best people out there, and they really do care. So guys, with that. Um, I actually really love a lot of the things that you guys are doing. Um, please, if you have a show or you have something out there, um, let me know about it. I'd actually love, give me the chance to help promote you, uh, just in sharing the show, because guess what? You guys really do actually matter to me. Um, and with that, I want to send you out with this. Enjoy it.